Yeah, we're live. It is 8.49 in the a.m. Hopefully yeah, you guys are having a good morning. Today, I want to talk to you about the Forgotten Warrior, the 4.6 liter three valve. Um, they made a lot of two valve motors because they were using all kinds of stuff. The three valve and, they, and obviously the four valve got um, Cobra stuff, you know, got all the excitement and love. Three valve stuff just didn't seem to get nearly as much love, and and I would argue it's 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 as are good or better than than the original Cobra motors and the four valve Cobra motors because it had really good flowing heads and it had variable cam timing, so and it had a really good intake manifold, so it did very well. Yeah, modular power is in the in the house. I kind of figured it. All I had to do is shake the dinner bell there, and all the modular guys would come running. But so the three valve, I think, uh, didn't get a fair shake. It, it, it actually is a pretty good performance combination. And every one that we tested did, did very, very well. So what I want to do, do is we're going to talk about some uh, Dyna results from 463 valve stuff that I did. And it's interesting because we did some variable cam timing, even though we didn't have variable cam timing hooked up. <laughs> we, we did the analog version of, of uh, variable cam timing. <clears throat> but we ran the 463 valve on the engine dyno. I think Tom was running that with a fast and he did the programming on it. He did the tuning on it, but we couldn't control the, couldn't control the drive by wire throttle body, but that was an easy fix. We just made the super Richie vice grip it and, and uh, you know, just a, the super Richie drive by wire throttle body we just made a mechanical version of it. And then, but we couldn't control the variable cam. So, so we just ran it with it fixed in place. We just left it the way that it was and ran it. <laughs> kind of hope for the best, whatever that default setting was. And when we did that, we ran it with long tube headers. And obviously it had an optimized tune for this particular combination. And it made 362 horsepower and 381 foot-pounds of torque. Um, what we did then was because we couldn't control the variable cam, which we knew would, would be beneficial at it. It, it always is, but we decided to we decided to do it mechanically. So what we did was um, retarded the cam one tooth. Excuse me. And when we did that, we did see a change in power. We picked up power up top. Uh, the peak was up to three hundred and sixty nine point eight, so three hundred and seventy horsepower. Um, the peak torque actually dropped a little bit from 381 foot pounds down to 378. In fact, the you guys can't see it, but if you take a look at the curve, we had a significant change in power. We had we lost by retarding the camshaft one tooth. We lost 28 foot pounds of torque at 3100 rpm. We gained 10 horsepower at 6000 rpm. So the changing the cam timing was doing what you would expect. So the general consensus is if we advance it, we add low speed power. If we target it, we, we um, add top end power or, or higher engine speed power. The problem with that is it's not universal. It's not that way with all cams. Some cams have advanced already built into them. Some, some cam combinations and, and engine combinations don't respond to that. This one did. And the reason that this one did is it because it was designed. It was designed to do exactly that. It was a it, it was a literal little. It was literally a variable cam. So the camshafts were designed to do that. The combination was designed to do that, and it did that. We they did that in a sweeping fashion, not not in an analog fashion. We did like skipping a tooth, but it shows that the loss in low speed power and then the gain in top end power shows what would happen if you had the right cam timing in all of those RPM ranges. They don't, in, in, at wide open throttle, they don't sweep the cam timing very much on factory applications. The ones that we've seen are, you know, between eight and 10 degrees uh, from the low RPM to the high RPM in terms of change in the cam time. They sweep it a whole bunch, like at part throttle and idle and stuff like that, but, but not very much as a change at wide open throttle. And we see that on the Gen 5 LT stuff and uh, the modular Ford stuff, Coyote stuff. Um, so there is a change in power. So if we had the cam in its advanced position, we would have all the extra torque down low. And then it changed over to its uh, retarded position. <laughs> um, 
uh, and we would gain the power up top. And it might be that one, one, uh, one tooth on the sprocket is not the right amount. It's just the minimum amount that we could change it. So it might, it might want more than that. It might want less than that. And so whatever the, whatever the degrees was, but it did show that, Hey, look, <laughs> these guys, Ford engineers knew what they were doing by doing variable cam timing. Obviously, it does work. Um, what we did then was after that, we added some nitrous to it because nitrous is a really easy test. And you just have to hook up the bottle. And the, we ran a fogger nozzle going into the throttle body. And that picked power up from 369 and 378 foot pounds to 427 horsepower and 468 foot pounds. <coughs> so it picked up a pretty good bit of power. It, you know, it, we only ran a 38 jet, I think, and, um, and a 22 fuel jet. I think we had to play with the fuel jetting on it because we were really, really rich to begin with. And I, we had to adjust that. But it picked up power, you know, you hit the button, picked up a bunch of power, carries it out it didn't carry the curve didn't stay consistent all the way through. I think it was getting rich again at the end. So we, we would have needed to adjust that a little bit more if we wanted to get a, a gain, but it, I think it was a set of like a 65 or 75 shot. Then we took the nitrous off and then we added a supercharger. So we added a Paxton centrifugal supercharger um, and with no intercooler on it and ran it at uh, a peak of 11 pounds, 11.3 pounds out at 62 or 6,300. It started off at 2.5 pounds at our load in, which was 3000 or 3,100. And that pushed power up to 559 horsepower and 513 foot pounds. So it picked up almost 200 horsepower from the, vo from the blower, which is good. We ran good gas in it so we could run timing in it. We ran a 191 mixture. And then we also changed to a different pulley to speed the blower up because, as we know, if you're going to do that, <laughs> if you're going to put boost on it, um, you want to, you know, just like with a turbo, you want to add boost to it. And with a blower, you change the pulley and add, add boost to it. So we put a... Um, a 3.33 pulley on it. And the previous pulley was a 3.6 pulley. That changed it from 11.3 pounds at the peak to 13.7 pounds. Down low, although the same starting RPM, it only changed it a couple of a tenths of, a, of a, you know, one less than one psi. In fact, only about three or four tenths of a psi. So th this is the this is interesting. And, and by the way, so it went from 559 horsepower and 513 foot pounds to 613 horsepower and 545 foot pounds. And the interesting thing is, and I keep bringing this up about the guys that are trying to ro run waste gated um, centrifugal superchargers and thinking that it's going to, you know, ha have all this big boost gain. Down at low engine speeds, it's not going to change it very much. <laughs> we we just changed the boost by two and a half psi at the top, and it changed it by ten percent of that <laughs> down at the bottom, because that's how math works. So it changed it a few tenths of a of one psi. So you're never going to get the gains down at three thousand rpm. You, you could you could spin the thing to where you would be hurting it, and it's just not going to get big gains down there because that's how centrifugal superchargers work. But it did make, obviously, a lot of power on the top. We picked up uh, 40, 50, 53 horsepower from the change in boost and picked up 30 foot-pounds of torque. And this thing was still climbing. as At 6,200, it was still climbing when, when we were revving it. So it would have continued to make power. And then at this boost level, I definitely would have introduced some kind of intercooler in the situation because it you know, it definitely benefit from it. We weren't running E85 back then. We were just running. We had some, um, I think it's probably Rocket Brand uh, 100 and then mixed that with 91 just so that we wouldn't hurt it. It was, I'm sure it was plenty safe, but it shows that the three valve stuff can make lots of power. Um, I think we ended, we ended up running turbos on this thing and tried different cams and ported heads and all kinds of things. And just like we do on, on all the other combinations. And it, 
it does exactly, you know, it, it responds exactly the same way. I wish that we could have run a, a factory ECU on this thing and, and had the variable cam working so that we could have had, you know, the, the gains everywhere it would have been, it's, it's more beneficial. It's just like when you see a, you know, when, when you see a VTEC motor or, or any of the VVT motors after you see it in, in operation or a variable runner manifold, you see that operation, you're like, oh yeah, I definitely want all of that. I want all of the high RPM stuff that the short runner does. And I want all of the, the low RPM power that the long runner does. I just want to combine all that. And that's, that's one of the nice things about variable cam is it does add a bunch of average power production. And I, I wish we, we, we could have done that, but alas, we did not. So I'll start a poll here. Okay, is the 4.6 liter three valve better than the 4.6 liter four valve, meaning the non-coyote four, well, but that would have been a five liter, but you, you get the idea. Better than the Cobra motor. So what do you think? Three valve with variable cam timing or four valve? You let me know, let me know, let me know. Mods your powers in the house. Prestige. <laughs> Sometimes you just need expert advice. Oh, three valve is great. Just fragile phasers give it a bad rap. Did they have problems with those braking? Was that a was that a common thing? I remember taking one apart and having all the springs and stuff come out. That was exciting. I had to go buy another one from the from the dealership. Somebody found a way to make the VCT more durable. The three valve would suddenly become arguably the best version of the 4.6 liter ever. I think so too. Now, what is the problem? Is it a, is it a spring problem? Is it an actuator? Is it a oiling orifice? What's the deal? Drag van, what's up? Good to watch your live stream today. Awesome. Home from having surgery, so waiting for the stroker to get for my Mopar small block. Are you, are you okay? Everybody send good thoughts to Drag Van. Richard, I meant to ask this uh, LS question. I, there's no bad questions about, and there's no bad engine families. The only casting mark I can see my LY6 is E247, and I can't find reference to that anywhere. I've never heard of that number. Um, is the... So the cast, you don't see a casting number on either side of the head. Um, look on the front side and on the back side, right below the valve cover rail. There should be a little pad there that has a number that says 8, 821 or 823 or something. Once around the Maple Leaf. Are, are you from Canada? Are you from Canada? Eh? We're live. We are live. We can't say advance and retard the camshaft. Right, poor LY6 head. Yeah, I've never seen the, the 247 reference. So, Guillermo, you don't like four sixes? Richard, is a Chapacabra Texas Speed Cam the same thing as a Truck Norris Cam? Uh, uh, Chapacabra and Tex and, and Truck Norris cams don't have the same specs, if that's what your question is. The politically correct police. Yeah, yeah, but it we're 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 referring to a camshaft. Well, I was wondering how much damage you're doing to an engine when you do the ghost cam tuner. What's a what's a ghost cam tuner? You got to enlighten me. Don't forget to don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Love my 463V. It's been rock solid, reliable. Currently have 190,000 on it with cams, long tubes, and a few other mods. 335 wheel horsepower, 340 foot pounds. Cool. So no cams on that, right? Those would be with stock cams.
I thought the three valve was an upgrade and updated version, or is it the opposite? The the four six two valve and four valve um, were before the three valve, <clears throat> and then they went to the Coyote after that. The Mercury Marauder was a good running four six four valve. The three valve came out after the four six two valve and four valve motors. The three VVCT system is extremely vulnerable with the sludge inside. And it's not physically strong enough to withstand the pressures required for constant reliable operation at seven thousand plus RPM. I don't. I don't think that motor makes power up there, though, right? So, are the oiling passages not? Big enough to this get clogged or something? They're all better than the two valve. I had a cyst near my temple removed. Hard to wear my glasses. Can't get back to work until tomorrow. Okay. I'm not sure, but aircraft engines from Germany in, in the best, fastest prop planes in the service choose for various reasons to run three valve jump when four valve was available. They claimed it was a, it was better for boost. Okay. Context doesn't matter. Yeah, it does to me. I spent so long trying to figure out how to spell the one word. I forgot what my, <laughs> forgot what my question was. I know it. They come and go. Uh, I'm up in Canada. Where Where do you live in Canada? I've been up there quite a bit. I've raced up there quite a few times. There was a four six four valve in our '96. They predate the three valve engines. Yeah. This came out early. Just came out down back in 96, right? Never seen a camp azer go. But they can't take big cams and springs. Uh, I meant big engines. You know, uh, Abel, I don't know what you mean by what my thoughts are. The ghost cam tune just makes the car sound, uh, oh, like it's got a cam in it. They, they give it the cami sound by making it run poorly. Ghost cam tunes will either take advantage of the VCT to make the engine idle rougher or like in the case of a coyote, locked out at a very aggressive setting to let the cam profiles create the idle. Okay. So the, <laughs> they're just making it less efficient. Eastern Ontario, about halfway between Toronto and Kingston. I've been to most port, um, Shannonville. Where else? Been to a couple of other places up there too. Cool. That's why I voted yes because it was engineered to fix whatever the issue was. Was my thought process? Yeah, I think that they were trying to make the motor more efficient, but still, I don't know if a three valve head flows as much as a four valve head does, but it might be close. Near Montreal, I I love to going up to Canada. The the people up the everybody that we met up there was so nice. When we we went through, we stopped off at a um, what are the donut places up there? Hortons is that what it is? Um, and we told the guy that we we're from Southern California. He goes, oh cool. Do you <laughs> do you know Pamela Anderson? We're like, oh yeah. They all of the people just hang out at the beach and. Watch Pamela Henderson run in slow motion. I always thought it was weird they didn't squeeze larger exhaust valves than the three valve head. The T valve has 37 millimeter exhaust valves, and the three valve is a 34. Probably just didn't have room, right, with all of the valves there. He recommended an inexpensive turbo for a 5.3 with a capa power capacity of six to 800 wheel horsepower. I want to be very responsive, but I think. That the GT45 will be too small in the long run. You're gonna have, there's not gonna be a cheap alternative for that, I don't think. 
Um, maybe talk to Viren at VS Racing or Robert or over at Force Performance. They might have something that would bridge the gap. I don't understand wanting a lope, lopey idle, but I want to not run a blow off valve to get compressor surge on a closed throttle and my hippogriff. <laughs> you want to not run a blow off valve? That's probably not a good idea. You have to ask yourself this question. If the three valve engines were better than the four valve engines, why did Ford go back to the four valve engines instead of continuing to three valve? The, the question isn't an absolute, are three valves better than four valves, which is what you seem to be indicating there. The, the question is, is the three valve version of the four six better than the four valve version of the four six? So it's, it's specific engines that we're talking about. Not universally are three valves better than four valves, and, and we we know that what <laughs> what people are using, certainly in racing and stuff. Three valve head is around two hundred and twenty cfm. Uh, B four valve heads are two thirty at four hundred. Okay, I thought that the four valve heads were a little bit better. Nobody uses B heads though. That's those are just silly. That you get prestige going. Just at the tip of Prince Edward County, so Shannonville, super close. I I ran Formula Two Thousand cars up there at uh, um at a at a circuit in Shannonville or near there, and they had a school up there to teach us how to race. It was pretty cool, and there was a there was a drag strip there too, and we got to watch guys running the um, snowmobiles with the rollers and stuff on it which was kind of cool too i thought because i didn't being from california i don't get to see that 93 lincoln mark 8 was the first four valve okay Very variable cam timing was around in the 20s mechanically actua actuated yet since you asked the three valve can make plenty of power at 7,000. Yeah, but I, I just meant, my point was that a stock one doesn't make power at 7,000. The chop is as uh, American as apple pie and baseball. <laughs> Certainly if you'd listen to a Harley Davidson idol. The LY6 came with 5364 and 823 heads. They're basically the same, yeah. Three valve could have fit a bigger exhaust valve. They the when we're nitpicking what the engineers did, we we need to realize that what what we want is not what they were trying to achieve. <laughs> I've heard of cam phaser problems with the four six three valves, but most people use the lockouts to avoid the issues. You you kind of end up having to do that eventually depending on how big you of the camshaft you put in there, you don't have the ability to phase it anymore unless you put, you know, a piston that has valve release in it. B heads are silly. I love the idea of making power of those old dual port heads. Yeah. Mahovic sure like them. Mark 8 was Ford's first 464 valve, but far from Ford's first 4A into quad cam 4 valve cylinder head V8s. Yeah. Uh, Eric, I agree that the GT45 would be good for him, but it's only going to do 600 or 650 at the tire probably is. Um, this is going to be kind of the range for that, I think. I used to corner marshal at the races. Oh, cool. So you worked there at the track? <sighs> I'm not a big fan of the three valve two piece spark plugs. Yeah, especially when they separate. The stock three valve makes some impressive low speed torque. Can't wait to see some three valve V10 Triton action. I, I, I now would, because we didn't get to run it as a variable cam, I, I would like to see 
dyno runs of a Cobra motor um, versus a three valve motor in stock trim and just what they see what the low speed power is on the three valve to see if it's better than the four valve is. Really for, I know that they had the Imrix in the, in the early ones, but I'd like to see if they, if that added enough low speed torque. Early four valve engines had real trouble under severe boosted conditions with cooling the valves. They had more room to run coolant around the stem and the guide. There aren't any, there aren't many modern advancements in engines that haven't been tried in the early days. Our machining materials have just improved to the point where all the great ideas can finally be utilized. Yeah, they had some sharp guys back in the day that did lots of cool stuff. What do you think is damaging more bottom damaging to the bottom end, peak torque or peak RPM? I think it would determine how absolute you're getting with both of those. So are you talking about 1,500 foot-pounds of torque? Or are you talking about 10,000 RPM? Um, you know, where, where are we looking at for those? Richard, could you do a 463 valve build? The, I've done lots of them already, but I the problem is we didn't ever do it with the variable cam timing working. I, I did hear about Calvin's. In fact, I was going to reach out to Calvin today and um, ask him if I could help in any way. This is my dilemma. Wanting a sleeper, yet in love with radical choppy idle. <laughs> I go with the stealth idle. That's the nice thing about a turbo combination is that you have um, you have all the power that you want and all the stealth that you want. Uh, Pre-runner supercharger or turbo Garrett G G42. What power output are you wanting? What's the displacement of the motor and all that? Like, what's what? What are you what are you trying to achieve there? Other than it being a pre-runner. I do know that a three valve dropped into a '99 Cobra with no other mods would outrun the stock '99 Cobra. Would it really? Do have you tried that? Have you done that test? Everyone knows 462 valves are the best. <clears throat> I'm a fan. <laughs> I, I mean, I was initially disappointed when they introduced the 46 and replaced the five liter that everybody loved that already had a multi billion dollar industry around it. But, um, you know, and, and the fact that it, that because it was an overhead cam motor that it didn't rev to you know 25 thousand RPM. Do you have a video of you running an eBay GT45 on a 462 valve? I think I do. I think when I did the one from Hot Rod and we did the stock Hemi and the stock LS and the stock 462 valve, I think that that was a, um, I think that that was a GT45. 46, no, not that. Coyote, 5.3, power adders, no. Stroker turbo, I'm looking for the um, 462 valve turbo. Oh, here we go, I think this, this is it. I think this is it. I think I found it. Yes, a whopping 500 horsepower. Uh, no, it was not a GT45. I think it was the 76 millimeter from CX Racing, it looks like. Not, um, that's kind of small, I think, for a. That's kind of small for that. I mean, it was only for 500 horsepower, so it was, it was more than enough to support that, but it wasn't the GT45. 460 valve turbo hot rod. Let's see if it'll show me the picture of it. 
Uh, yes, that's definitely a, um, the little one is definitely the um, CX Racing 76 millimeter. Yeah. Seven, six, deuce. It makes more peak and average power of both run through a manual transmission. Three hundred horsepower and three hundred twenty foot pounds on the three valve. Isn't that what the four valve was, or right about that? I would think average power would be better for the variable cam motor, but do you need VVT for three valve for max power under wide open throttle? Uh, yes, you do. If you just leave it in a default setting, it's um, it's advanced from its ideal setting. At least the the one that we ran was. Todd, what's going on? Six O with the BTR hot rod, just soft sand to make it as good as possible in the sand. Best sound. So. Uh, Car dude, you like the you like the way that the three valve sounds? I kind of like an O3 Cobra with a X a Bassani X pipe exhaust or something on it. Those sound pretty good. Peak, peak torque versus RPM under seven thousand. Uh, I I don't know how to answer that. I don't. Neither one of those are damaging for a motor that's designed to run with the outputs that you have there. I don't like RPM. <laughs> I don't like lots of RPM. I think that that's damaging. Um, and I think that the, the window for problems um, is a lot smaller at, at, at high RPM. There's a video on my ice cream drag van racing three valve Mustangs. I was using a stock 360 with a small cam and a 125 shot. That's cool. So you beat the Mustang. Is that before or after the recall fix on the 99 Cobra? What did they have? Um, did they have to port those or something? Were they not making the power that they thought they would? Yeah, Prestige, the an S475 or even a 7875 for 800 wheel, because that's that's a even I think the Gen 1 might go 900 flywheel horsepower, which would be 800 wheel horsepower. And then the Gen 2 and Gen 3 stuff would probably do more than that. I'm a big 5.4 three valve fan, even though many people fear them. I think they're great low. Junkyard gems. I could usually find several. Once they're fixed or or repaired for the threads, don't don't they work well after that? Running a turbo with three inch exhaust under the car with a Gen two LT one and a small two eighteen two twenty four comp cam. So get everything together. Cool. Got a Howard Rattler cam. Is it a Diamondback? Ford racing manifold, long tubes, all of us recording mods, plus a 150 shot. Two thousand eight. Is it is your two thousand eight a two valve? I use the GT five hundred twin sixty millimeter of oh, the throttle body. I'd like to build a 543 valve powered F-150. <laughs> Mad mod, you want me to use a Pro Mod 88 millimeter turbo? That's pretty good size. I still can't believe that I 
that I ordered uh, or borrowed actually is a better term, um, an 88 millimeter turbo for when I was trying to make a thousand horsepower with a 327 Ford. They tried to tell me that's, <laughs> that's more turbo than you need. I'll be the, <laughs> I'll decide that. I'll be the judge of that. And they were right. Uh, Todd, I did read your email. I thought I responded back to it. Which 4.6 sounds like a foreign sports car? Maybe a Coyote? What's the limit on a stock bottom and three valve? I don't know. I would think it would be comparable to a um, to a two valve. It's probably rod or piston if you're talking about boost. The four valve sounds good, but the three valve is the one. Mine makes 350 wheel horsepower. Unopened just cams, intake, and bolt-ons. 500 on the nitrous. I usually keep it at 125. Unopened just cams, intake, and... Well, if you put cams in it, you had to open it up, right? 600 horsepower on a stock bottom end, 4.6. We know that I know that two valves go beyond that because I've done that. I'm putting 127 forehand 100 comp cams in my 54 F 150. Which ones are those? Is it a 262, a 270, 268, 274? That's how I know them. Should I pull timing when using nitrous? Yes. Unless you have um, a very low shot or um, you have good octane. Sometimes we run 100 or 125 shot and we have um, you know good fuel in it. We don't pull any timing. And our motors on the dyno are run cold anyway, so they're, there's much less chance for detonation. Put 500 pounds of nitrous. That's a lot of bottles on the stock bottom end three valve over the years and still working good. Pre runner 60, 799, or 823 heads along with the VTR hot rod camshaft kit. I'll go with Supercharger TVS 1900 or Garrett. The, they'll all be reliable if you're tuned properly and, and you install them correctly. Um, a G42 is going to support a lot more power than a TVS 1900. So what kind of power are you trying to make? And I think that I would change the turbo depending on your power needs. The 799s or 823s will not get in the way of you making power with either one of those. The 823s will make more power and aim. Tony, you blew up your stroke three valve. Was it a, was it, did you stroke it out to a five liter? You want an 800 wheel horsepower? 800 wheel horsepower is going to be hard with the um, 1900 supercharger. It's going to take a lot. It's going to be easy with a turbo. 1990s five liter Mustang with Flowmasters. masters. 2008's a three valve. Is that when it started? Like I was thinking, oh, in 2000, that's right, 2010 is the Coyote, right? Should I always pull time when using nitrous? Yes, you should. You should pull four degrees for that. I pulled two degrees for a 125 shot. 88 millimeter is always the right choice. <laughs> I pull zero timing for my 100 shot. The two valve Triton has the weirdest sound, but it's still my favorite. The one Navigator four valve, the guy put eight in one header, sounded ungodly. Yep. Just took the cam cover off. That doesn't, that doesn't count. So unopened is the, the head, 
the head and block interchange. That's the official open thing. Like the Coyote crank strokers they're putting together, Coyote rods are also a good cost-effective upgrade over stock for six parts. Is the rod length the same? Is it? Is there? Are all of the things the same on the Coyote? You got to go back to Duolingo lessons. So the Chevy man, I have to agree. The H pipe '90s Mustangs with OG Flowmaster sounded good. I was not a fan of Flowmasters. Uh, Tony, I, I I can put my email down. Um, I'll put it in the description of this video so you can get it there. I don't know that I'll be able to answer questions on um, swap stuff, but I can try. I usually dump a bottle of Boostane in the tank when I know for sure I'm spraying. I usually shoot for 95 octane, but still pull two degrees for 125 shot and four for 150. Yeah. Is it better to have an iron block or an aluminum block? Your engine is capable of making 600 horsepower for the street. What what engine family is that? And and the aluminum block or iron block is just going to come down to weight. Both of them are going to be strong enough for 600 horsepower. I love it when people pull so much timing for their hundred shot. They make less NA than they less than they would NA at full timing. Four degrees of timing is not going to really hurt the power that much. Anyone in the Pacific Northwest want to swap some Pro Street for something 2.5 inch? Uh, say you you need injector sizing for your power output. So 80 pound injectors are common. The Deca 80 stuff that's out there a lot um, will support a thousand horsepower on gas, but not on E85 uh, under boost. No cats, no muffler, or straight to an X pipe and put the back. It sounds amazing. Not sitting in my garage waiting for you, me to fix the four valve. Spin tech mufflers. Yeah, I liked um I like flow or uh magna flows. The boral exhaust that I had on there I thought sounded good. Um I even like the super traps that I had on there, um, although they were a lot better once I once you take all of the take all the plates out of it. Yeah, Tony, there's there's probably a lot of three valve five four guys here. If you want to, there's probably a lot of guys that can help answer questions here. By the way, just about to have the turbos ready to test out the dividers and the exhaust housing. That will be cool. I got to get off my butt and polish the inside of the volute on the exhaust housing. You're polishing the inside of it. The guys at Extrudone used to do a lot of turbine um, turbo housings, both compressor and um, and hot sides. It was pretty cool. And I, they, I even saw them do a bunch of impellers, which I thought was interesting. I like the old thrush turbo mufflers. <laughs> yeah, the thrush hushes. My brother in his, he had a '67 Firebird, and he had he had thrushes on that. He had headers and thrushes. Richard just learned the Coyote motor got his name from the AJ Foyt race car. Ford's first four valve V8 race car. The Coyotes were the, um, I thought that that's what they called the cars that they ran at Pike's Peak. I know a few four six two valve and three valve coyote rods making six hundred wheel horsepower and being alive. How do people know that the coyote rod is better than the factory rod? Coyote Big Bang video, that would be cool. Q 
Trudon seems like a cool idea. Did they do the manifold on the 9901 Cobra motor you tested? Um, I don't remember the in intake manifold. I don't remember testing an extrude honed one. I'd have to go back and look. I, I know that we've tested ported ones and modified ones, but I don't remember if they extrude home the intake manifold using a small flapper wheel and Dremel. <clears throat> That's going to be a little time consuming. Cardi, do you have any issues with heat? Just curious, maybe you know, why were the 543 valves so much worse on the cam phasers than the 463 valves? Does anybody know that? Um, Prestige, did you leave already? That I would have thought that they would have used the same phasers. I don't know why they would have changed that. Anybody know how to put a navigator motor in an 09? I already made the header since nothing aftermarket works and the motor mounts are coming in. One big question I have is the three valve ECU. Yeah, I'm not going to know anything about the factory ECU stuff or the harness. The motor should bolt right in. I like the cheaper versions of the Spintex. I run key 16 in a separate fuel cell for my nitrous. I didn't change the timing for 100 shot. Yeah, if you're adding that, that's fine. And two degrees for 150, four for 250. I ran 600 passes in eight plus years, no problem. Yeah, so if you're if you have octane, that's good. Coyote rods have more material around the wrist pin and rod bolts. It's much beefier. That's those are both the places that you would want it. Be able to run the 544 valve. Like, can my tuner just tune out the VVT? Does anybody know? I don't know if the if all the sensors are the same. I've seen videos online of people porting and polishing the insides of their turbos. So are you talking about <clears throat> porting and polishing the inside of the housings? The I can see the entry, but not the not the machined area that the um, impeller is adjacent to. Because if you change that, you're changing the distance between the impeller and the housing. You don't want to make that bigger. Um, like I said, I said the guys from Extrude Home, I've seen them port impellers um, to try to improve the flow rate of the impeller itself. And they were doing that on applications where uh, turbos were mandated by the rules. Specific turbos were mandated by the rules. So they were trying to improve the housings, improve the flow rate of the impellers. especially on low buck turbos. Truck and van engines have longer service intervals and typically see harsher and longer loads. Advancing retarding camshafts is a trade between low and high RPM power. It can be. That, that's why they're they're doing it less for power production in OEM applications than they are for other things like emissions and drivability and fuel mileage and stuff. But but the general consensus is that retard the cam timing for higher RPM power and advance it for lower RPM power. And that's just relative to each other. I know there are uh, three valve lockout kits that you could put in the factory phasers to stop move, but apparently the computer doesn't care. No, it might. It's all it's doing is sending a signal to a solenoid. It, it, I don't know if it has feedback to know that the cam advanced or retarded. If it's seeing that from a, um, from a cam position, and and if it defaults or whatever, I don't, I don't know if it does. If it's that sophisticated, but yeah, it's just sending a signal to a an oiling solenoid. Have you seen the guys at Garage 54? Yeah, I love their stuff. That's fantastic. Keep up the good work. Love the content. Lunch break is over. Got to get back to work. How's our poll doing here? 
Is the 463 valve better than the non Coyote 464 valve NA Cobra motor? 63%. More is better. Four valve is better than three valve. You know what you know what they say. Once you go four valve. Once you go go four valve, you never go back. Dang little ice cubes get in the way. We have those little smiley face ice cubes that <laughs> just basically fit perfectly with the curvature of any glass that you're trying to drink out of and and they work as a dam. Texted four valves for the win. Yeah, Tony, that would be cool if you can run that, if you can run it with the same ECU. The injectors should not be a problem. Is it is it taking the, does anybody know if the crank or the cam sensors are different on the three valve than they are on the four valve? You should snag a 99 Continental 4.6. Is that the bundle of snakes one? Speaking of mad scientist stuff, I watched a video last night on Renault turbo rally car intakes that guillotine the intake air before the turbo compressor. Yeah, if you if you throttle the compressor, you can um, keep the thing spooled up. And they, they did all sorts of cool forms of anti-lag in those, um, in rally cars and in road racing cars. They injected fuel, even had spark plugs in the exhaust, all kinds of cool stuff. 93 to 96 is the bundle of snakes, okay. That's 1200 bucks too much for a used Holly HP unit. Does it come with everything? Purple hornies? What are purple hornies? 99 used a twin runner to a single port C head, but used no Emmerich plates. Oh, okay. Manifolds. Sanchez probably has those. Uh, Admiral was here earlier, uh, Winston. He probably had to book it. Last question I'll drop. Is there a circular throttle body that fits the Coyote manifold? But can also communicate to the three-valve ECU. Are those, um, those are both drive by wire, right? You might have to run an adapter to the factory style throttle body from round to oval. I wonder if somebody makes that. 2.7 liter Audi bi turbo five valve engines are cool. Yep, because five valves, you know, I, I've owned a five valve motor. Cam sensors look identical, except there's only one on the four valve and two on the three valve. Hoping one is okay. Lots of hoping with the swap. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's going to want to recognize that or not. Every time I go to Indianapolis, I go to the Speedway Museum. I'd like to go there. I've never been. I love looking at all the cool mechanics of race cars going past there. Constantly keep circulating the cars on display. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, purple hornets are both on glass packs that bolt to the collectors. Okay, I seen the the we had cherry bombs here, um, and they had both um, you know slip on versions. But I think that they also had some of the three three flange versions also that you could just bolt right to the header.
Early Continentals were beheaded and used texted blocks. The bell housing was basically the same as a three-layer Taurus. So you could do a V8 Taurus then? You could do a Super Show? I mean, they already had V8s in the later ones, but not cool 4.6 ones. Is the 463 valve better than the non-Coyote 4.64 valve? Still 62% saying nope. Aren't 5L is a bit complicated for the benefits? Yeah, they, it's just something that they were trying back in the day. But you can say I have a 5-valve engine. That's, it's more than a 4-valve engine. And titanium connecting rods. Get more valves is more good. It's like more boost. We had three flange purple hornets on my 70 Chevelle and a 350 long tubes. It was it was pretty loud. <laughs> yeah. All of the glass pack stuff was um, they had variable noise quality because <laughs> when you blow all the all the packing out of it, the muffler definitely sounded different. No valves, yep. Biggest issue with Continental Motors are the motor mounts not being on the side since it's for transverse use. Is So the block is actually different then? I wonder why they would make a dedicated block like that. Seems like it, you would just use the standard block and just with a different mount. When I moved to Seattle, the muffler shop wanted 240 bucks to weld some flow masters and pipes. I had already up, bought some purple hornets, and w went on with your business. I think it's physically cast, but not drilled. Some people say it's not even cast. I need to go curl around yours and see. It, it wouldn't surprise me if they did a completely different one. And it wouldn't surprise me being what they were, what was going on with the modular programs back then, that they wouldn't have made that in a different engine facility <laughs> and made it completely different and not talk to each other like they did with the um, Romeo and Windsor versions of the modular Fords. Just, I don't understand that from, even from just a cost perspective, why would you do that? Why would you have different ones? It just don't make no sense. Oh, that reminds me, I got to get a hold of stainless header dudes. <gasps> Titanium zoomies. Oh, I'm so jealous. Turbo, turbo headers. Okay, I'm clicking on turbo headers from stainless headers. Shout out to the stainless header guys. Oh, those are good looking. I kind of like those. I'm hoping that um, both on Buick Olds Pontiac turbo headers, huh? Buick Olds Pontiac guys, Ford Mopar turbo headers, both on Chevy headers, big blocks, big block 429s. Those are not cheap though. Those are a thousand bucks, but they're nice though. Ford inline six turbo headers. Dang, Gina. Ford Barra, Ford FE. Ford four liter Barra turbo header front exit. Four liter Barra turbo header straight exit. Coyote. Godzilla. Man, they got all the stuff. Gen 3 Hemis, Mopars, small block Chevys, Pontiac D ports. Man, these guys got all the fancy stuff. Ford Victor, Yates, standard D port Pontiacs. Man, those guys kind of got it going on. 
When are the wrong cam shirts coming? I know, right? Richard, do you personally run? Yes, I do. I had a 91 town car. Definitely had a code as the plug got fluid in it. <laughs> Richard runs it all. No, I do. I, I run with the dogs and I run by myself. And I ran cross country back in school and stuff and I just have kept doing it. I bought Panther Log Big Block Chevy headers. If anybody wants to deal on them, I looked up a Hypertech tuner for my truck. I'll list the features DTC. Those are the um, trouble codes. Those tell you when there's a problem with the sensor or some other thing going on. It's the check engine light. Perfect turbo candidates. I'm 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 liking the Ford 300 turbo thing. I'm going to hire someone to get the exercise for you. All you have to do is get the exercise app. I just take a Fitbit and put it on my dog and just let him outside and go run around. And it says, you did great today. You... <laughs> I, I don't have a Fitbit, but if I did, that's what I would do. Uh, you mean for a Panther car? <sighs> my Frosty Cold Beverage is finished. I think when he asked, what do you run? Do you mean, do uh, what do you run in your car? I thought he said, do I run? Let's see. I'm going to row back. I'm scroll, scroll, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Did I miss it? Did I miss it? Oh, what do you personally run? Are you asking what car I have? I have a 2002 Chevy Silverado. Full race. By that meaning that it has a muffler on it and it's all stock. I have, I have other cars too, though. Any plans to do 4.3 liter V6 testing? Yes, extensive V6 testing, because I just bought one. Um, uh, we have the, uh, I'm going to put a, a M90 on it. We're going to probably run the Torque Storm back on it. We'll run a turbo on it. We'll run nitrous on it, a cam. I don't know about cylinder heads. I don't really have any good heads for it. Have I ever dialed an opal? It's an interesting, interesting spelling of opal. But no, not on a chassis dyno. I do like opal GTs. And I like the, um, what is the, uh, what is the little sedan too? Is it a, um, is it a Manta? Opal Manta. Yes, I like those because they look like the RX3s and 4s of that era. Three hundred would be cool with a crossflow head. Everything for science, yes. Test all of it. I won't. I won't do a crossflow head on the three hundred. <laughs> Just we might port the head that's there or whatever. But I. I just oh, the only reason I want to even run that motor is because it has a cool intake manifold. I'm, I'm all in on the induction system. So we're going to close out our poll at 64% saying, uh, no, don't, don't bother with a three or but stay with a four valve and not a three valve. Ported heads are expensive. Yeah, they, and, and they're iron heads and it's just, it's big and it's heavy and, you know, just not <laughs> generally not a good idea, but maybe somebody has one that they can loan me or give me. That would be good. Cobra four valve would be all aluminum too.
Got twice as much as I hope done when clearing the trees. Oh, for your dirt track? Cool. Make, dude, make sure you send me pictures. You guys need to get a drone up so that you can do the overhead shot. Oh, Robert, you seen guys run the a carburetor on the EFI intake manifold? That that would be interesting. I have the I have the, Holly sent me the their their throttle body set up for that that has the injector and stuff in it. I probably want to run that. Does the um in fact that makes me wonder um it's got to be a port injected deal, right? Three hundred inline four. I see lots of carbureted manifolds for those, but where is the um? Why are they not showing me any of the EFI stuff? These are all kind of. These are all just kind of silly. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, so you could just mill off the flat part on the top and put a carburetor on there. That would be pretty easy, right? Man, these manifolds are selling for a lot of money. It's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. <clears throat> and on that note, it is time to go. Carbs where the throttle body was, and then some people split the EFI intake and build the thing. Yeah, that I want to split it to change the runner leg and stuff, and that will be cool. On that note, it is time to go. I will see you guys all tonight. Bunch of cams going out.